I'd now like to introduce Jenny Legg. Jenny is the Managing Director of Job Fit Systems International. Um, not only is she a physio, has a Master of Ergonomics, she was on the uh, Scientific Committee organising the uh, Oc Health program as well. And today she's going to speak about uh, developing software. Thanks very much, Jenny. Thank you, Linda, and thanks for inviting me here today. Um, I've been asked to tell you a story about um, how I developed the JobFit system software and moved out of my physio comfort zone into the world of technology. To be honest, it feels a bit funny um, standing up here speaking from the heart rather than presenting a research paper. So I sincerely hope that my message comes across the right way. So here goes. Uh, sorry for the busy sir, first slide, um, but I've been kind of busy the last few years. Uh, the JobFit system is a painted software program that compares worker capabilities to job demands. It's used by employers, insurers and health professionals to identify suitable duties for injured workers, develop job-specific functional assessments, identify hazardous manual tasks and also produce job dictionaries on demand. It's used by companies such as BHP Billiton, Extrata, Cadbury and QR National and is supported by a network of around 200 health professionals in Australia and overseas. So how did a small time physio from Mackay, North Queensland end up building a multi-million dollar technology company? Well, it's all because I wanted an ice cream and I hate going to dirty, stinking hot boiler maker sheds. Although I would settle for one right now, to be honest. <laughs> so um, picture this, Mackay, North Queensland, summer, tin shed, dirty, stinking, hot boilermaker stuff. I didn't want to be there, but there was a guy who hurt his back and I needed to analyse his job so that he could go back to work. So I did my thing. Then two weeks later, you guessed it, Mackay, still in North Queensland, of course some things never change, still summer, same tin shed and same dirty, stinking hot boilermaker stuff. But it was a different guy and this time he had hurt his shoulder. So again, I went out and I did my thing. But if only I had analysed the whole body the first time, I wouldn't need to go back and waste my time, all their money, and hang out in a dirty, stinking hot boilermaker shed. But then, of course, there was the report. And Sunday afternoon, which is when we all do reports, right? Sitting in my office next door to Baskin Robbins, white chocotamia mania, writing reports, cutting, pasting, and doing the same thing over and over and over. And I thought, there's got to be a better way than this. So I developed the grid system to analyse the whole person that became the basis of the patent that got turned into the job matching software that generated reports on demand. So, yippee, ice cream, here I come. <laughs> but then, of course, along came these people called customers and they wanted it too. But why? Why would they want job matching software? I mean, what's so special about that? We all know about work, right? How hard can, be, how, how can it be? We've seen Boilermakers before. I mean, they even had a girl doing it at the start of that dance movie called Fame, so it can't be that hard. We've sat at computers ourselves for hours at a time, so we know what that feels like. We bought groceries, had things delivered, cooked meals, made the bed. We know what work is like. I mean, we all work ourselves, so we know what it's like, right? But that's like saying, I know about animal physio because my neighbour has a dog with a limp. And I know about gerontology because I have a grandma in a nursing home. I know about sports injuries because I sprain my ankle playing tennis. I know about manual therapy because I love getting massage. I mean, who doesn't? I know about aquatic therapy because I've been swimming. And I know about peds because, well, I was a kid myself once. So, but we all know it's not that simple. And Oc Health Physio, just like the other as aspects of physio, is a specialised area. And part of that skill 
comes in transferring our medical jargon and their technical jargon into layman's terms so that we and our customers can speak a common language. And that's what the job fit system does. It stores worker info and job info in exactly the same format so you can, can, can compare apples to apples. It then becomes faster, the process becomes objective, and it's there when you need it for the employers. No appointment necessary. And that's why our customers wanted it. And of course, if you want to learn some of the other skills of Oc Health Physio, we'd love you to join our group. Roosevelt said, believe that you can and you're halfway there. But what about the other half? What about the more sure and safe half? Well, I have balls of steel. And apparently as a woman, you need to go one better, so I've got three. <laughs> and they sit on a shelf in my office. The first is called protection. Now, IP protection is paramount for a good idea, whether that be patents or trademarks, and they also become a saleable asset and part of your marketing campaign. And I can assure you that what seemed like overkill and paranoia at the start when it came to legal protection has always paid off in the end. Then, of course, you need financial protection, and I suggest having another source of income in the early years for peace of mind as much as evidence for the bank and gr any grant applications that you make. The second one is proof. Now market research is absolutely essential, but you have to ask the right questions. And then sometimes you don't know what they are until you get started. And of course, scientific research has been a large part of our continuous improvement process, which has resulted in publications and hopefully soon a PhD. But of course, be wary of analysis paralysis, and sometimes it's best just to get going. But one of the best parts of proof come from our customers, so that's someone who is willing to pay for your product, but more importantly, stake their reputation on it, and that's some of the best proof that you'll ever get. So keeping them and referring them to, and having them refer to others is a true reward. And the last by, by, by last, by no means least, is persistence. When you're passionate and excited about what you're doing, and when you're continue, committed to continuous improvement, whether that be formal or informal, and you listen to customer feedback, it's always a challenge in balancing sales and innovation, which of course is very addictive. They both cost money, and they both make money. So which one do you choose? My bank account usually reminds me, but the little voice inside of me also says, when you stop innovating, your product is dead and your business soon will be. So you have to do both, patiently, passionately and persistently. So having an innovative product is a double-edged sword. Being first to market and an industry leader is a competitive advantage, but you spend most of your time educating the market. Becoming the expert uses a lot of energy. I don't know if any surfers out there have ever tried to catch a wave and started paddling too soon. Well, it's absolutely exhausting. I paddled for five years. It's exhausting, and when it finally catches up to you, you find that others are trying to drop in on your ride. Now, there were three main challenges for growth. They were around technology, finance, and knowledge, and knowledge of mine and my customers. With regards to technology, mine wasn't fast enough, wasn't secure enough, and it wasn't clever enough, but it is now. Theirs wasn't fast enough, wasn't current enough, and wasn't open enough to allow for easy implementation. With regards to my finance, it was all about cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. So communicate with your customers, your suppliers, and your financiers, and make the most of government assistance programs, because there's really some terrific programs out there, and we would not have survived without them. When it comes to our customers' finance, it's all about getting the right licensing models and looking at the impact of their budgets and the timing for approvals and the levels of approvals and return on investment calculations. 
With regards to knowledge, I had a huge knowledge gap with technology. I don't have an eye anything, I have to admit. And also with reseller channels. So surround yourself with others that are smarter than you and more experienced than you and trust them, but trust your gut more. Ask questions and listen to advice, but only when it feels right. Don't follow blindly. Our customers' knowledge gap, we had to fill by attending and presenting at conferences, writing technical and research papers, providing consultancy services, and these activities were and still are a key component of our marketing strategy. So make sure, though, that you give something for nothing, because what goes around comes around. Which, of course, then brings me to another piece of advice, which is put your energy into maximising your strengths and find someone else to cover your weaknesses. As Einstein warns, don't let your education get in the way of your learning. As physios, if we want to go out and try something new, we have to learn to let go of our dependence on the evidence and the knowledge that we've taken years and years to build. Otherwise, it's going to hold us back and we won't innovate and explore. So it's okay to reevaluate and decide that you've made a mistake or want to take a different path, or maybe you took a wrong turn or even changed your priorities in life. But never ever throw up your arms in the air and say, I give up. Never do that. It's better to have tried and failed than to never have really tried. Remember the balls of steel, protection, proof, and persistence and they'll always be there someone to help so just start begin it now you can do it if you really want to thank you thanks very much jenny